One task that geologists uh, frequently need to do is to classify their reserves for reporting purposes. So in this case, they needed to, to uh, report what is measured, what is indicated, and what is inferred, usually through George standards, or each uh, region of the world seems to have their own set of standards, but uh, the, the uh, general process is the same. You're going to classify based on distances away from known data points. You need to determine what uh, volume and mass and quality of resource you have in each of those areas. So this, uh, we're going to kind of go through this with Mindscape, how we, uh, how we, how you can calculate uh, your uh, reserve classifications. So in Mindscape, in Strat Model, we have a set of menu functions right here under Reserves, Resource Classification. And these menus are laid out in the order in which you will go through the process. So we kind of guide you through the process of resource classification. So in this first uh, form, this is pretty much where everything uh, takes place. And you set up this specification and you go from there. I have several. You can have several different uh, uh, options that, uh, or different uh, resource classification specifications you can set up. Uh, I'll just go with this uh, classify one. And if you for a new one, you just type in a new one. Set in your uh, what model you want to be using, what stratigraphic model. And I've got one called uh, Stat Fault. And what quality model do you want to be using? And uh, what the model type is. We're going to use the, the stratigraphic grid model. Also need to decide or tell the system where the drill holes are at. Uh, basically, this is the measured locations uh, or data points. So here we got uh, a D holes to uh, file and a, and a layer called D holes, which has our two drill holes in it. If you are using the GDB product, you can use uh, this section down here, drill hole name template, and a sheet spec if you like. Uh, sheet spec can be used for both uh, drill hole uh, data in a layer or in a database. And on the output, where do you want the output to go? A design file will be. Uh, written to, which will contain the uh, polygons of influence, as well as we will be creating a grid file as well. And we'll have a prefix to our uh, reserve classification. So you can decide what uh, prefix you'd like to have. You can have multiple classifications, but this prefix really relates to this specification. So as I'm looking at layers uh, of information, I can readily determine that this uh, prefix goes with this uh, resource classification. On the controls tab over here, you can use slope calculation, which means if you have a, a dipping seam that you want to use, uh, the uh, polygons of influence can be uh, draped onto those uh, intervals, then you can use the slope calculation. If you just want a flat lying seam and horizontal calculation is fine, you can use the horizontal calculation. So this is an option for uh, slope and horizontal, and it all depends on your deposit. We're also going to select a, a quality. And this ensures that we're using measured data, and it's not uh, assuming that we have a quality associated with it. Uh, we know that it is a cord uh, hole, and we have good information on it. We are using ASH in this case. Uh, you have all your qualities that you can choose from to select here. You can also use thickness. If you set thickness up as a quality, uh, I know some uh, customers like to use thickness as, as uh, the fact that they have a thickness uh, in the hole. That is uh, an indication that they want to use, the, uh, use that data point. And then you can choose what surface you want this to be on, whether that's on a roof surface or a floor surface, or just simply uh, a thickness surface that you want to, uh, to drape that on. This is an example of what layers will be created in the design file. So CL, which is the prefix, A1, which we'll, we're going to talk about later, is the interval we're going to choose, and then ASH, which is the quality we have here. And then a grid value example, CL, which is the prefix, A1, which is the interval, and categorization, in this case, measured, as an example. On the polygon of influence area here, you can omit polygons for isolated points. So if you have a circular polygon all by itself, not connected with another one, you can omit those polygons. If you would like to see those, you can uncheck that to, uh, to go ahead and generate those. We will also talk about uh, a Veroni 
diagram polygon. So this, um, the Veroni diagram polygon, if you select that, we'll use a Veroni diagram to generate the polygons of influence rather than uh, circular polygons. So if I choose this, I will get uh, a different result in, in the and then the polygons of influence then just circles. The advantage of the Veroni diagram is that it will not produce laterally unsupported polygons of influence. And what I mean by that is if you look at here, this is a laterally unsupported set of polygons here. And over here, these uh, do have the ability to have lateral support. So you get the straight line of drill holes will not be this will not be created as a polygon of influence. The circular uh, method will produce these as uh, polygons of influence, and the Veroni diagram will not. So that's the choices. If you do have poly expanded Veroni diagram polygons selected, then you can apply expanding factor. The Veroni diagram polygons will include just the points at the data points uh, for the for the polygons. So if you want to actually go out a little bit further than just the data point uh, to get a little bit more area, you can apply expanding factor. And then the curved corner, curve step, the Veroni diagram by, uh, by creation will be very angular looking uh, based on the data, but you can apply a curve to those, uh, to those angular areas to give you a little nicer look. You can also use washability float quality as well in your calculation. Now we move to the intervals tab. Here we're going to specify what intervals we want to be evaluating. Here I've got the A1. You can choose other ones, uh, maybe A2, and you can actually include this, these two, into one evaluation by saying I want this to expand into the A1. In this, in this example, we'll just uh, use the one interval, A1. On the resource tab, you can select your various categories. Now here I've got a, a measured category. I have a distance of 800 meters and I'm going to use a display definition of measured which I've created. And If I look at what measured is, I see that it's a green polygon and it's a solid fill polygon. That's basically essentially what, I, what I'm really using out of that. And then likewise for indicated and likewise for inferred. And for inferred I've got 2,000 meters indicated 1,600 meters. This would be based on a competent person's uh, distance that they want to apply to the calculation. And then on the status, this gives you an information about where you are in the process of uh, what has been created, what needs to be done, when it, was, when it was done, on what date and by whom. So this is our resource classification uh, form and specification. So when you're you're okay with that. You can say, I'm going to go ahead and create circular ones here. I'm going to say okay to that. And then we just continue it down along the process. I'm going to just tear this off so I can have it here. Now I'm going to do a posting. So the next thing you do is a posting. In this case, you just merely select the resource classification specification. All this rest of this information is just informational only cannot be changed. The only way to change this is go back to the resource specification and change it there. And you can say OK there. The points are now posted. And there are my points. Drill hole name and a quality, an ash quality associated with it. I'm going to turn off uh, some of these to uh, reduce the confusion. So that's the posting. Then we do polygons of influence. So we go to polygons of influence. Again, you select the resource classification spec. This is what will be, uh, will be the output. So we just merely say OK to that. And then we can go and return those. Uh, we turn on uh, inferred, indicated, and measured uh, polygons. Now, we can set the. Uh, we want to see measured on top, and we want to see indicated in between. We can set our uh, render order here. And then we also might want to uh, put the drill hole information on top. So now we can kind of see these are the polygons of influence that are created uh, with our specification. 
Now we can create a grid. And this grid is a, uh, is again, we're going to select the classify uh, resource specification. And then we're going to grid these polygons of influence. And we're going to have these various uh, names that we want to include in the grid file. And this is going to basically build a grid file where we have a grid outlining the area of the measured, outlining the area of the indicated, and outlining the area of the inferred. And we're going to use these later in our uh, reserve calculations. And this is why we are gridding it. We're creating grid surfaces so we can better uh, manage the reserve classification in reserves. And then finally, we can do a graphics. This graphics will be basically a contour of the grid that we just uh, we just created. So we'll say okay to that, and we can turn this uh, we can turn this on when it's done. And here we have the grid of our polygons of influence. Now the nice thing about having this as a grid and having this as a surface is now. Uh, makes our life in reserving a whole lot easier. So now we've really done the reserve resource classification. Now we just want to run a reserve. So now we can go to reserves, sample, polygons. This is going to set up what model uh, you want to be using, what drill hole, and so on. This is where we have it set. And this takes us into our reserve area. Now I do have a reserve polygon uh, in the blocks design file. Uh, it could be any polygon you want. It could be a polygon around the entire mine area, the mine permit. Or maybe you want just the uh, polygons that are that are outlining in this uh, in these areas. You can use these polygons as well for your uh, calculation. I've got a top surface, which is my topography in this case, and a bottom surface. And then this is the A1 recovered bottom. And then if we look at this, uh, this is something we can do with surfaces. This is an expression surfaces, which returns the non-missing uh, value for the floor of the A1 or the topography surface. This way I always get a surface. Nothing goes missing in my uh, reserve calculations. Uh, this could be a, uh, simply a, uh, an elevation. This could be a, a grid surface or any other type of surface you have available to you as the bottom surface. I'm going to output this to the classify table. I'm going to output this reserve to a table file so we can review the numbers. And the polygon column I'm just going to call area. And we, of course, we want volume, we want plan area, we want mass, we want vertical thickness. We're going to do this. We're going to accumulate this, and we're going to set our variety of uh, configuration for our reserves. But the real benefit of the reserve classification is when we get to surface sets. When we get to the surface sets, we can hit the fill resource button. We can select our resource classification specification then this all gets filled out for us. We're just going to break up our uh, reserve calculation classified by measured, indicated, and inferred. You can also apply qualities to this calculation as well. So if we say, when we apply that and we run the, the uh, reserve calculation, and when that's finished, we will have a look at that. And here is our resource calculation. So if anything here it says resource is the uh, resource that we're after and it's placed in this case coal. And then it's anything that says oh, topo original here is the uh, is the burden or waste material above the coal. Now if we want to really look at this uh, just look at the resource we can just use a uh, filter something like uh, burden uh, equals uh, resource. And we say OK to that. And then we just get to look at just the resource column or rows. So we don't have to look at all of this stuff together. And we see if we move over here, we have our quality uh, data as well. So this gives us uh, resource indicated inferred. Now if we want to maybe report that out of this table or maybe we want to move it into an Excel spreadsheet, you can go to table file, open an Excel, And this will give us our table information, our reserve calculations for indicated, measured, and inferred in a in a Excel spreadsheet. So anyway, you can print you can print out of here, or report out of here. Uh, this gives you a a great way to further 
post-process or whatever your information. So I hope that uh, is useful for you and understanding how to use the classification menu, resource classification, and creating resource classifications and reporting resource classifications out of Mindscape Strat Model.